Why we do what we do in life and business. Says Charles Duhigg, humans are creatures of habit, and if you want to change your life, you have to start to change your habit. This is what this book, Power of Habit, tells us. I'm going to discuss with you how this book has literally changed some of the things in my life. My name is Munif Ali and I became a self-made multimillionaire in my early 20s. I have built multiple brick and mortar businesses with billions in sales. I've started making these videos to share my life experiences, teach others how to become more successful in life and in business. And if you like the type of content that I'm giving you, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, like the video and go ahead and share it with someone who you think might find this useful. According to Charles Duhigg, habits can be broken down into three processes, namely cues, routines, and rewards. The first part is cues. Duhigg states that a habit needs to be triggered by a cue. Whether it may be a good habit or a bad habit, cues are what urge you to take a particular action in the first place. Like when you had a fight with a loved one, you may tend to smoke a cigarette or eat a donut or maybe you meditate. If you want to avoid harmful habits, you need to stop exposing yourself to those negative cues. And if you want to encourage good habits or good behavior, you expose yourself to the cues that will cause that type of an effect. All cues fall into five categories. That is location, time, emotion, actions of others, and what was preceding the last action, basically and namely the emotions. Formulate questions in these categories. For example, why did you eat junk food? Could it be that you were feeling stressed, you had a fight with someone or an argument, or you eat to de-stress or hide your frustrations? So use these categories to target specific areas of your behavior and create effective tactics to either enable or remove them. Now that you know how to identify cues, the next step is to learn about reward and cravings. Humans do specific actions to have specific results. A person works out because they want to be healthy, and a person smokes because they want to de-stress. By identifying the reason for your actions, you can get to know why you crave this particular result or reward. Doing so will help you create different routines that meet that reward or avoid it. For example, when people try to quit smoking, what they would do instead of smoking a cigarette is chew nicotine gum or use nicotine patches. In this way, they're still going to fulfill the craving for a nicotine high, but reduce the dangers of smoking. Once you identify your craving and your cues, now you can find ways to alter your habits by changing your routines. A person that is trying to quit smoking can find different ways to change your behavior, such as exercising instead of smoking, playing board games instead of smoking, or learning how to draw instead of smoking. Take note of what you can do when you feel that urge to do a negative behavior. Focus on creating different routines to avoid specific triggers and negative cravings. Like if you're a person who'd like to drink to forget their pain, they can look for a friend to talk to instead. Or if you crave a certain addiction, try creating a new positive routine instead, such as learning a new skill. People who want to break bad habits are often more successful if they plan in advance. Charles discusses that people who are more successful in changing their behavior are the ones who are prepared for or expect difficult situations that they will face. You must have the willpower to bear the pain if you want to change your life. And in this book, Charles describes how a group of researchers studying people recovering from knee injury found that people who write down their plans for a painful therapy are more likely to recover since they set their brain to beat and endure those pain points. If you like the type of content I'm giving you, go ahead and apply a little bit of liberal pressure to that like and subscribe button and let me and the YouTube algorithm know that this video is valuable to you and I'll continue to bring you more content like this each and every week. Also, make sure that you turn on that notification bell as well so when I come out with a new video, you know about it. If you continue to adjust your habits and reinforce them with positive changes, you will likely spawn new habits. This is what I call a keystone habit. The book exampled how those who are trying to lose weight used a daily food journal to track all of their behavior. 
By practicing writing in a journal every day, the dieters were able to recognize bad habits that they weren't aware of at first. They then targeted those and removed those negative patterns, making these dieters feel like they made small wins in their lives, which boasts their overall confidence and motivation and gives them momentum to build better habits in their life. Those are the few lessons that I can share with you after reading The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. I urge you to read the book and apply what it's teaching you. I guarantee you that you're going to like it. And if you're someone who is trying to change their way of life or simply wanting to improve themselves, I know that it did mine. And it will help you if you share this video with people who might need your help in reforming and establishing good habits. Remember to like and subscribe and remember to comment down below and tell me about the habits that you're trying to change and how you've been successful if you've been successful to help other people. If you want to learn more about human behavior, watch this video right here on how to beat that afternoon slump. Four ways to get more energy.